So not that long ago, I made the decision to install Windows 11 on my Steam Deck. And as I went through this process, I was kind of amazed at how little there was out there about how to get this working well, in particular, how to get the controller working well. There seemed to be several different options, but some of them just weren't that clear to me. Maybe I'm just revealing that I'm not all that intelligent, but like no one had really laid out a really simple answer to the best way to get your controller working with every game on your Steam Deck. Initially, I tried an application called Handheld Companion, and it was pretty good, but it gave me some trouble. And then I discovered what I think is by far the best answer to this problem, an application called Steam Deck Tools. And strangely enough, like I said, there just really isn't a ton out there explaining this program to people. So in this video, I'm going to uninstall it from my Steam Deck and I'm going to reinstall it. And I'm going to walk you through the very basic steps to get your controls working. Maybe I'll touch on a few ancillary tangential things that it can also do as we go through it. And hopefully this will fill that void for people asking this question. All right, I've just finished uninstalling all of the things that I'm about to now reinstall. The first thing you're going to want to do is click on the link in the description down below, which is going to take you to GitHub. OK, this is where the Steam Deck tools lives. Now you're going to scroll down to look for releases over here on this side. Go ahead and click on that and scroll down again. You're looking for Steam Deck tools setup.exe make sure that this is nice and legible for you steam deck tools and the version number might be different just it'll be the latest one should be the one that's over there and that is the one that we want go ahead and click on that and it should begin downloading although you may see something like this that says that it isn't commonly downloaded make sure that you trust it and you can trust it it is absolutely fine we're going to click on the little three dots next to that and hit keep and show more and keep Anyway, it basically thinks that this is a virus or something like that. But trust me, it is absolutely fine. One other thing that we're going to want to grab while we're here, go back and scroll down to performance overlay under applications. Click on that and then it says uh, Rivatuner statistics server download. Go ahead and click on that as well. It's going to open up another link. And we're just going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. This is what's going to give us our performance overlays when we're, when we're playing a game. We're going to click on 7.3.3 final, and that should also download automatically. Okay, we can close our browser. Let's go into our file browser and look for downloads. At this point, you should have the following two files in your download folder. Steam Deck Tools is the first one that we are going to mess with. So let's double click on that setup process. And from here, let's see if I can actually zoom in any further and remain uh, clear and legible. That should be OK. We can we can work with this. OK, so let's click on next. I agree. Next and then install. No need to change any of those settings at all. You can just let that ride. You're going to get this pop up in command prompt for a moment and you should be able to click finish at that point. OK, now you get a pop up here to use Steam controller with Steam. You need to configure it first. The first option, use 360 controller with Steam preferred. That's the one we're going to select. Hit that and then click on continue. Steam controller configuration has changed. You can start Steam now. So when you do that, it actually does close Steam down. We're going to go ahead and open Steam back up as we move on to the next step here. Right click on the uh, Guru 3D dot com uh, zip file and we're going to click on extract all click on extract again and it should open up a new folder and you should see the setup file there let's get rid of that steam pop-up double click on that and hit yes english is fine for me next accept the terms next next install and we don't want the readme we're going to turn that off and click on finish okay so we're pretty much good to go at this point let's close steam again and we can close that as well you should now have several things running down here in your task bar although i should also mention before we go any further that that second application that we installed, the one that allows us to have the overlay, the Riva Tuner statistics server, that needs to actually be launched for any of that stuff to work. And what you can do here is you can double click on it and make sure that start with Windows is turned on. You're just going to want that thing running all the time. 
things that you can right click on and see some different options. Enable desktop 360. Okay, the one thing that we're gonna wanna quickly change here on this one here, I'm not sure what that icon is supposed to be, but it's that one. We're gonna go to OSD mode and you can change this to whatever you want it to be. I, I like having it on minimal. It just shows a bit more information, but you can see here, you can change the brightness, the volume, the refresh rate, which mine is actually set to 40. I believe that that's something that requires a little bit of prior work being done. I know that it's something that I already did. I don't think that this tool just gives you this ability straight out of the box, but I may be wrong. FPS limits, GPU scaling, there's all kinds of really good stuff. You can even change the TDP, the GPU, uh, the, the, the clock rate that the GPU is running at, the CPU, power saving mode, maximum, lots of really, really good stuff here that is available to be used. But now what we need to do is we need to actually launch a game. So obviously Steam is not super relevant because any game that was launched within Steam was already going to work fine. So what we need to do is we need to launch a game from something like Game Pass. And I'll show you what happens here because it's actually quite cool. So as we launch into a game, you can see the performance overlay up there at the top, which can be customized like I kind of showed you a moment ago. You can go through and change how this is going to look. But the biggest thing you're going to notice here is that this is not a Steam game. I'm running this through Xbox Game Pass through the EA app, and my controls are all still working just fine. Whenever the game booted up, you could actually hear the Windows sound as though a new controller or something had been plugged in. And you can see down here, it is recognizing this as if it is an Xbox controller. Now, one more thing you can do here, if you actually long press on the start button, you'll see this actually change to be a keyboard now, okay? And some of the things are going to work, but the buttons are not going to work anymore. And I wanna make this part extremely clear. What Steam Deck Tools is doing is it's waiting until a game is launched and then it's taking your controls, which by default in desktop mode operate as a trackpad to move your mouse, a trackpad to scroll, left and right click, where you can scroll with your joystick as well. Really, really nice controls for your desktop. It sees a game launch and then it flips the switch and it turns this into an Xbox 360 controller, thereby making it compatible with whatever game you're about to play. Any game on Windows that is compatible with this controller will now be compatible with your Steam Deck. Another really useful thing about Steam Deck tools though is that no matter what mode you're in, 360 mode or desktop mode, you have access to a whole bunch of really, really useful hotkeys. If you wanna switch between 360 mode and desktop mode, you can long press that start button to quickly change between them instead of having to come down here and right click on this thing and do it that way, which is a little bit more difficult. That is definitely an easier option. You can also do Steam plus uh, the little, I guess that would be start to do uh, Windows plus tab to quickly switch between your open applications. You can do Steam plus the three dots, which this one's sometimes a bit finicky. Sometimes it launches immediately. Sometimes you have to do it a couple times, but that gets you into your task manager. Uh, Steam plus A is going to be your enter key. Steam plus B is all F4 if you hold it for one second. Steam plus B for three seconds just kills the active process outright. Steam plus X brings up your keyboard. I hit Y there on accident. Steam plus your stick up and down changes the brightness of your screen. There are so many good hotkeys here. I'm not gonna go through them all. I'm gonna drop a link to them though in the description so that you can see them firsthand. So there you go, guys. I know that there's actually a lot more in this app to cover. I'm not gonna cover all of it. This is just kind of a basic overview. Install this app just like you saw in this video and your controls are gonna work pretty much out of the box on whatever game you're gonna try with only a handful of little things that you need to do every now and again to make sure that that stays the case. Guys, hit that subscribe button before you leave. I'll see you in the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.